Welcome to another edition of Basta TV from the Basta 2015 in Mainz. With me is Hadi Ariri, he's with JetBrains, and he was a speaker for years on the Basta, and now for about two years you haven't been here, Hardy. so I took the chance today to speak to you. Um, you changed in the Java world about two years ago, and uh, haven't had the time and opportunity to come to the Basta. Today you are here. What has changed your mind? What, what, what <laughs> made it that, that you changed the worlds? And why did you come back? Well, I'm <laughs> well it's, it's great being back and nice seeing you, Mirko. Um, I, I don't, it wasn't all related to me um, doing other things. I, it kind of happened as well that in the past couple of years, I had another baby. Well, we had another baby. And it coincided during the Basta time, mm. Basta February. So I had to skip that. And then it was a bunch of other conflicts. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of <laughs> contributed to, to my absence as well. But I have been in the past uh, several years focusing a little bit more on the JVM side, Java side. And, and that was actually uh, initiated by, we, we, we came out with a language a few years ago that, that we're aiming to release this year, um, which is called Kotlin, mm -hmm. which targets the JVM and JavaScript. And I, it sparked my interest. Mm -hmm. So I started to look a little bit more into Kotlin and it being very, very similar to C Sharp slash JavaScript, mm -hmm. and, but being statically typed, I even got more interested. And that just took me more into the JVM world. Um, so that was kind of like the catalyst. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just started to um, just do more stuff in that area and do a little bit less in the .NET. Um, but having said that, you know, even before that, I was a little bit more doing, well, my my areas and what I've loved most is web. It's always mm. been web. So I have been doing a lot of JavaScript as well. So yeah. Node.js and, and at some point, you know, that those have kind of fusioned ASP.NET and Node and yeah. JavaScript. It's kind of yeah, that's the thing we, we, we um yeah, we see today, and that's we're, we're talking about a lot of uh, about uh, cross-platform technologies here at the Basta, and uh, so we can see there are words growing together. Now, maybe not the Java and the C sharp world, but but the Java aspects of of the web and the C sharp or the .NET aspects of the web they are coming closer to each other, and something like like JavaScript uh, has become the lingua franca. For everybody, unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> maybe, yeah. You've Kotlin, they have uh, uh -huh. uh, TypeScript, <laughs> yeah. So there are lots of possibilities to bridge the gap. Yeah. Uh, how how do you see this uh, evolvement? I mean, I, I think that you know the with with the increase of uh, with, with the growth of JavaScript, you know, there's there's been an increase in terms of frameworks and libraries mm. that make client side development. Um, much more feasible or, or less uh, eff um, with less effort, so to speak, right? Although, you know, the frameworks like Angular, um, React, all of these, they bring their own sets of issues, right? But at the same time, they've opened up the web to do rich client-side development to, to many of us that before maybe we didn't want to spend hours and hours and hours rolling our own things, right? And so we, between that and this focus on, on REST and HTTP APIs, there's been a natural tendency of web development becoming kind of like a, a back end that is just, you know, spitting out HTTP requests and, and, you know, processing HTTP requests. And then a lot of the actual web development and the client application being on the front end with JavaScript. And this is, you know, as we say, as you said, that JavaScript is a common denominator here. And that's why you're seeing exactly the same in the JVM space as you are in the .NET space. You know, more and more people are actually using JavaScript along with their, you know, technology of choice. Mm -hmm. Be that C Sharp, be that Java, be that whatever language. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, I think it's just an involvement of JavaScript and of the frameworks and ecosystem around it that's, that's pushed us to this kind of like a cross-platform yeah. Place. Um, having someone here who is inside in both worlds, we were discussing a lot here the, the, the fact that the, the short release cycles and the, the many updates coming are probably confusing developers because they, they have 
always new features. It's a thing, especially with Microsoft, maybe the .NET thing, that .NET 5 is not yet here, but parts of it are already in, 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 in Windows 10, and developers do not know what they can expect uh, for, say, two months. People in the Java world are used to it, um, and they are used to, to choose between many frameworks. The people in the .NET world have to learn that. Um, how do you see it from, well, from your uh, knowledge now? I mean, having been part of various communities uh, and, and more relevant .NET and, and somewhat Java and the JavaScript, I, I do see a difference in, in how people adopt things. So, for instance, the JavaScript community is very much, you know, oh, someone published something to, to NPM registry and uh, it's a 0 0.0561 and I'm going to use it, push it to production. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I find that in the JVM space, a lot of the companies, customers are a little bit more cautious and more conservative in that area. You know, mm -hmm. they're not just jumping onto the next bandwagon thing and to .NET to an extent. Uh, recently, Microsoft has been pushing out technologies and I believe that there's been a little bit of a pushback from people because it's right now, for instance, as you say, with ASP.NET, nobody really knows what's happening. Like, yeah, it's coming out. Parts of it are in somewhere. They're, they're you know, one thing is being deprecated in, in favor of another thing. And it, uh, some people feel that it's going at too, too fast of a pace. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I mean, I think that different communities handle it differently. Mm -hmm. um, but there is definitely the problem is that we're also in, a, in an environment where we love to chase the silver bullet as developers. You <laughs> yeah. know? And whether we chase that silver bullet because we think it's going to solve our problem or because it piques our interest mm. and we just love to learn, you know, that also plays an important factor of why we're constantly looking at new things yeah. and accepting new things that are coming out. Yeah, I remember that you had a keynote on the bus about three or four years ago with the title, Where's My Cheese? Yeah. So were you... Yeah, ask the developers <laughs> yeah, to, to, to be always interested in new technologies, yeah. to find new opportunities yeah. the next day when maybe their old technology is obsolete for yeah. some reason. Uh, yeah. So do you see that we are now at the point where we have to look for, for the cheese? Well, I mean, look, I stand by that. And, and, and because I have another um, talk that I've given um, as a keynote, which is uh, the silver bullet syndrome, where I talk about how as developers, we're constantly trying to, you know, pick new things without really needing those things. Mm. But that would kind of, kind of contradict what you just said, which I said, you know, we have to look at new things. Mm. And I still think we need to look at new things. It's just sometimes we make the decisions for the wrong reasons. Mm. We choose a technology for the wrong reason. Mm. But we, as, our, as developers, our job is always to be aware of what's coming out and know what's coming out and see whether that thing can actually potentially solve our problem. The next phase is the adoption. Should we adopt that? There, let's just not be guided by, oh, I get to work on something new. Mm. Let's take other things into account as well, right? But I don't think that it's a sudden thing. I, I think that this has happened all along. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know that I go back with, with SNS from the, the Delphi days, mm. right? Yeah. Um, and, there's, and Delphi conference is still going and Delphi still exists, but a lot of people left the Delphi ship and they went to other technologies, right? Things evolve, things yeah. progress, and you can't, I, it, I guess it very much depends on the individual, yeah. right? And, and what your goals are, yeah. right? Um, if you like to learn, if you like to see new things, if you like to do that, then I don't think it, probably now with JavaScript, with the churn is much higher, yes. You know, we, there is a much higher technology churn. So mm. frameworks, are, especially in JV, J, JavaScript community, things are coming and going before you can even blink, yeah. right? Um, so that probably contributes as well to it. Uh, okay. But um, yeah, you were talking about trying new things. Um, let's talk about it. JetBrains tried something new. They changed the license uh, um, policy. Yeah. And um, um, wanted now, like, like, yeah, Microsoft is doing it like others are doing it on a monthly basis. So paying for JetBrains tools on a monthly basis and you earned a um, yeah, shitstorm <laughs> uh, as a reaction. Why do you think is that and why did you do it at least? So we did it. We didn't do it so that you could pay on a monthly basis. We did it uh, and as our CEO outlined in his blog post, we have been following the, the model of 
buy a license and pay for upgrades, mm -hmm. right? For many years, for 15 plus years, mm -hmm. or 16 years. And it works. And it works because you know, we are getting uh, new customers every day. Mm. But basically, to, to cut a long story short, the, that model has a high entry cost and then much lower upgrade price. Mm. It doesn't equate to the effort that we are putting in. So we're not putting necessarily more effort into just getting new customers, mm. right? We are maintaining our software. Right. Mm. Software needs maintenance. It needs support. It needs new technology adoption. It needs all of this. Mm. And the high entry cost plus lower renewal doesn't align with the actual effort distribution that we put in. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to align those. To align those, we needed to do it in a way that would be uh, sustainable for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And also fair for customers. Mm -hmm. Right. And we thought, well, let's lower the entry cost mm. and um, then you know do it on a, on a yearly subscription or a monthly subscription mm. so I think the the backlash was reason you know there was the most valid concerns which is why we adopted uh, adapted um, things that didn't even occur to us like you know because we said that with the subscription you no longer would own the tool mm. Uh, you would just, um, you know, if you stop paying, you wouldn't be able to use it. People said you're just using this to hook us on and mm. jack up the prices, which is not the case. Yeah. So we address those concerns. <coughs> Excuse me. So we provide the fallback license. The fallback license is basically if you pay for a year and for whatever reason you decide not to continue the subscription, you will have a license that you can fall back on, mm -hmm. which was the li version available at the time you started the subscription. Mm. So it's different to the existing model. Yeah. But we've done this to align our efforts with the revenue mm -hmm. because we work very hard for our existing customers as well as trying to get new ones. And we realize that at some point the pool of new customers is going to run dry. And from there, then it's a question of what do you, what do we want to do? We don't want to pack up shop. Mm. We we love what we're doing. We're committed to what we're doing. We love our customers. We love our user base. And we wanted to, at a time which is which we can, create a model that will be sustainable in the long run. Mm. Because I mean, we're not blind to what's happening. You know, you see that open source projects, for instance, right now. They're asking for funding. They're asking mm. for sponsorship. They're asking for for donations. You know, it, it, software development needs to be paid, and all of us as developers are getting paid. Yeah. Right. So it's it's not nothing really beyond that. Yeah, and maybe um, it, it's a kind of model uh, apps have today because usually you pay for an app as long as you want to use it. If you don't need it anymore, or if they are in per, in app purchases, maybe uh, subscription models, people are used to it. So the customers are used to it. Uh, does it seem? It seems to me a bit that the, the developers are not used to it. Well, at the I. Moment. I mean, I think it's for certain lines of products, it is, it is used to it, right? Mm. So, for example, services. So, as developers, a lot of people are paying for services mm. on a monthly or yearly basis, mm. right? You know, all of these companies that provide monitoring tools, that provide performance analysis, all of these things are running in the cloud on a monthly basis. Mm. The key thing there is it's running in the cloud. Yeah. So, immediately we say, okay, well, I'm paying for it because it's running in the cloud. Mm -hmm. But running in the cloud doesn't, you know, the cost that you're paying doesn't necessarily equate to all of that is not going to hosting and upgrading and maintenance costs of running in the cloud. Mm. It is going to innovation, it is going to support, it is going to adapting to new technologies. You know, so the, 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 there's a developers, a lot of us have said, okay, if it's in the cloud, I'm fine paying a mm. yearly or monthly fee. And if mm. I don't pay, I stop accessing it. Mm. And yet, no, if it's a downloadable tool, I don't want to do that okay. because we equate cost to just running in the cloud with hosting, etc. Mm. Software is more of that, mm. right? Software is more than that. And all of the money that you pay on a monthly basis or yearly basis to all of these different services, that isn't all going towards the hosting and the upgrades for you. Yeah. You know, it's going to innovation to maintaining the software. So I don't want to make that distinction. Mm. The problem is that we're used to that distinction. And also there are, you know, in other scenarios, like 
apps that you download on your phone and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of them you just pay once and you download, right? Yeah. But Adobe has done it. Um, Microsoft has done it. Yeah. Um, a lot of other companies have done this already. Mm. So even here we see, without judging what you are doing, we can't judge that, but we see that there is a new mindset uh, even in software development with, a, yeah, with, a, uh, with trying to, to balance out the economic demands and the software quality demands yeah. on the other side. Yeah. So thank you very much for this insight, Hardy. Thank and you. thank you for having you here this year. It was my and pleasure. I hope we see us again here thank on the you. bus stop. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.